Hey guys, Jack here, hope you're all doing well. Today, we're talking some more BF1 news, suggestions for the game, updates, and clearing a few things up. First off, this is very exciting for me, I'm pretty hyped about this, and I wanted to put it at the start of the video. I've been holding off on this for years because I wanted to do it right and get the designs correct, as I mentioned a couple months back in a video. And, you know, we had some great ideas and suggestions from you, my viewers, so thank you for that. But I've got my first ever official Jack Frags t-shirt for sale, finally. It's it's been a long time coming I know so here it is this is the Jack Frags Armoury t-shirt and it's going to be a limited edition run available in both black and white with contrasting logo and if you look carefully you'll actually see that the logo is made up of some of the guns from the Battlefield franchise it looks very sharp in real life plus 10 points if you can name all of the weapons there and this design was created by a very talented guy called Smaze and I've collaborated with Teespring on this project to make them available. If you want to pick one of these up, they're available to buy at teespring.com slash store slash jackfrags or bit.ly slash jackfrags t. I'll put a link in the description below. Shipping globally and as I said, you can get these in black or white. There's the standard short sleeve version with the classic shape and that's what you can see here. And there's also a woman's version of the t-shirt available too that's got a scoop neck and shorter sleeves if you fancy that one instead. Not that I have that many girls watching but I know there's a few but they are available there if you want one. I have to say I'm really proud of these and how they've turned out. This is my first ever merchandise and hopefully you guys like the design and we've really worked hard on getting this right first time. I want my merch to be something that you actually want to wear, something that's cool, something that's sought after and I think this t-shirt looks pretty cool. I think we've achieved that goal. And as I said, this t-shirt will be a limited run available to buy for 14 days from now until July 13th at 8 p.m. PST. So thank you very much if you pick one of these up. And if you do get one, do make sure to tweet me pictures of you wearing them and I'll put them all together and make a montage video and stick it up on YouTube. So then, moving on, I have to make a correction to my previous Battlefield 1 video. In this video, it's called Secrets and New Mechanics. At about 1.30, I show footage of the mythical tank takedown from BF1. Lots of community members and content creators have been talking about this since the EA Play event, and it's a very interesting story. If you want the too long, didn't watch version, basically, there is no tank takedown mechanic in the game. And what you saw in that video was a combination of coincidence and bugs that made it appear that there was a tank takedown in the game. The long version starts at the EA Play Capture event a couple weeks back in Los Angeles. 64 players in a hot sweaty room playing the Battlefield 1 closed alpha. Sat behind me is Muggs TV and he mentions to me, hey Jack have you seen this, it's some kind of tank takedown. So I watch the footage that he shows me and it looks pretty legit. Pool Shark also mentioned on Twitter a couple days ago that he'd experienced a similar thing and also recorded it. I haven't seen that footage though. So we talk about it between ourselves, hey this is pretty cool, a new mechanic in the game where if you manage to manually get on top of a tank you can perform some kind of a takedown on it, Halo style. And from the footage, it looks like there's an animation missing. It's probably work in progress, we think. So a few videos later, myself, Westy and Level Cap talk about this. And I think the developers noticed and probably wondered what the hell this was. Alan Kurtz, one of the lead developers on the game, actually messaged me and said, what are you smoking? There is no tank takedown in the game. So we done goofed. So. Let's take a look back at that footage then and try to understand what's going on here. So Muggs TV is on top of the enemy tank and periodically it comes up on his screen with F takedown. This is the same prompt that comes up when you can do a takedown on an enemy player with a melee weapon. Watch what happens. F to take down, when you press that the prompt changes to left click. Got it, straightforward. So then, back to the tank clip. Breaking it down this is really weird. So at this very moment, Muggs presses F to do the takedown. His weapon disappears and the prompt changes to left click. His view moves downwards and there's an explosion. Watch it in real time so you can see and hear it without my commentary. We have lost objective Edward. looks 
pretty convincing, doesn't it? But let's watch it again a bit slower and see what actually happens. So Mugs presses F, gun disappears, the animation plays or doesn't play let's say, but all of a sudden the driver of the tank, in this case his name is Flabaliki, great name by the way, his model is now hanging out of the side of the tank clipping into it and note that he's a normal soldier model and he's actually a German soldier even though he's on the British team here and somehow he manages to equip an anti-tank grenade and throw it at his own tank causing the explosion and the damage but the tank is still moving and then even weirder he actually gets out of the tank after that and his character model has changed into the British tanker class model. Muggs then gets into the tank by pressing E and carries on his way. Really confusing when you slow it down but I think what's happening here is that when Muggs is on top of the tank his game client thinks that Flabaliki, the driver of the tank, is just stood right in front of him rather than in a vehicle which is obviously a bug and offers him the normal melee takedown. He accepts that offer, presses the F button and that's where the game breaks and goes what the hell just happened, what are you doing to me? I think this is brilliant and really interesting and it goes to show how what you want to see isn't necessarily what's happening on some occasions and also how we can report information incorrectly because of a bug and just coincidence and hype and rumours and because of trailers of the game showing people crawling around on tanks. You just build up this idea in your head. Interesting topic of discussion anyways, but I just wanted to put that out there and say, hey, you know, I was wrong. A couple of other people were wrong. It's just a series of bugs and coincidences that have lined up in the right way. And on first glance, it appears to be a new work in progress mechanic in the game that wasn't ever there to begin with. Should something like this be in the game though? I don't know, let me know what you think down in the comments below. So next up, DX12 support. A couple of other websites have reported on this already, but looking through my footage in the options menu, we can see that BF1 will have some kind of DirectX 12 support. You can toggle it on and off here in the advanced graphics options. The game already looks balling out of control of course, but apparently DX12 will make it look even better. Techfrag.com reported that EA is working closely with AMD to bring something called DX12 fireworks to the game, which along with the chipmaker's asynchronous shaders feature should make Battlefield 1 one of the best looking games of the year. I'd also like to note here that in the options menu we've got all of the customization that you can throw a stick at. So the important stuff like uniform soldier aiming, zoom sensitivity, HUD scaling, opacity, hit marker colors, crosshair color, all of that stuff will be in there from the get go, fingers crossed. So that epic customization that DICE LA added for BF4, it looks like all of that's going to be in the game from launch which is pretty awesome. Moving on, another topic I wanted to discuss was sound in Battlefield 1, or let's say Battlefield games in general. Obviously DICE have got to a point now where their games have some of the best industry leading sound in them. It's bassy, crunchy, they have ambience, the sound propagates throughout buildings and rooms, the gunshots and explosions sound very authentic. They're really good at that stuff. Now another aspect of sound in the Battlefield games is voice chatter. There's a lot of contextual audio that plays whilst you're in game. So in BF1 it might be someone saying thanks for throwing a med pack or screaming in a bayonet charge, spotting an enemy plane for example. I've also heard soldiers in BF1 say stuff like come on lads or dropping f-bombs and also stuff like grenade going out, you are right son, etc. So I think that for a pre-alpha they're doing a pretty good job of it so far. However, I think that more could be done to immerse the player in this regard, specifically more contextual audio based on objectives, specific scenarios in a match and how long is left in a match slash who is winning. And the thinking behind this mostly comes from me re-watching back some of the trailers that the DICE video team created for BF3, BF4 and BF1. Amazing trailers but something that they do is add a load of audio on top that's not actually in the game. And that really gives these trailers that special goosebump inducing feeling. Have a watch at some of these clips that I've cut and just listen to the amount of audio that they've added to the trailers that isn't actually in the game.
really makes a big difference, doesn't it? And I'd love to hear more like that in actual gameplay. So I've come up with a couple of scenarios. Some of these may actually be in the game already, or due to be added in the game, but here we go anyways. Starting off simple, you're a sniper and you manage to nail a long range headshot. And then a friendly soldier nearby to you could shout, nice shot mate. Getting a bit more complex here, the next scenario is this. Say the game is really close and you're pushing forward towards an objective with your squad. One of them then says something like, come on boys, this is our last chance for victory. Or if you're in a biplane with a gunner and you manage to knock off an enemy plane's wings, perhaps one of the characters in the plane with you shouts while laughing, we just knocked his bloody wing off. Or you know, like in the BF1 trailer I showed you as you're speeding towards a tank, stop you fools, dig deep boys that kind of contextual audio that dynamically takes into account pockets of action is fantastic and i wish we had more of that in the game i'm sure that frostbite engine can do stuff like that studying the score time limit vehicles in an area and trigger audio cues because of it it really does add ambience and intensity to the game and gets you fired up for it now some would argue that they don't like this sort of contextual audio and in a perfect world I'd love it in BF1 if you could turn it on and off both server side and client side. For 64 player public matches on Conquest most people would probably want to leave this turned on because it's just cool. But say for example BF1 builds up a small competitive scene, 5v5 infantry, it might not be the best thing to have characters calling out all the time and giving away their positions. That's definitely an interesting discussion to have another time I think. Right then, that's all we've got for today folks. Do let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Everything we've talked about in this one went on for a lot longer than I expected actually. Remember if you want to pick up a Jack Frags Armoury t-shirt, link is on the screen now and in the description below. If you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, a thumbs down and I'll see you in the next one.